Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out This Day in Baseball, and enjoy the game. Fresh Memorial Stadium in St. Louis. It's the seventh game of the 1968 World Series. St. Louis Cardinals with three victories, the Detroit Tigers with three victories. And the winner this afternoon takes the World Championship. The weather is clear and very pleasant. The temperature about 60 degrees. There's almost no wind here in St. Louis. And we're going to see two two game winners pitted against each other this afternoon in game number seven. The fabulous Bob Gibson, who won 22 and lost nine over the regular National League season, 2-0 in the series, and the left-hander of Detroit, Mickey Lolich, he won 17-9 and in the American League season. He has two victories and no defeats in the World Series. Well, Mr. Reese, this is it, and uh, we've got a very interesting situation here. Well, the Tiger left-hander, Mickey Lolich, only two days rest. Do you think that maybe they'll uh, check him as he warms up and see if somebody else might be ready right behind him? Well, it could be, Ernie. Now, Mickey Lola's having only two days rest. I'm watching him throw in the bullpen. Hal Narragon works with Johnny Sane as a pitching coach, and I'm sure that uh, when they come in, that Narragon will tell Mayo Smith how did Mickey Lola throw while he was warming up. If he did not throw well... It wouldn't be too surprising to me, to, as soon as this game starts, that Johnny Sane, the pitching coach down in that bullpen for the Tigers, may have someone start warming up as this game starts. This has been done before. And a lot of times, Ernie, that uh, the fellow will have his stuff in the bullpen down there and go on that mound and all of a sudden lose it. That's right, and uh, sometimes it'll work the opposite too, won't it? That he won't have anything and then he'll uh, sort of get it as he goes along? Well, I'm sure that uh, this has happened quite a few times. And Lowledge, if he doesn't have it down there, I'm uh, sure he'll be looking for it on the mound that first inning. Of course, Bob Gibson, he always seems to have it. And he looks pretty sharp throwing in the bullpen down there now. And the pitching coach, Billy Muppet, is not letting anyone warming up, warm him up except himself. Not a catcher, Billy Muppet, the pitching coach for the Cardinals, warming up Bob Gibson. Now we'll give you the starting lineups for the two teams, the... Tigers are pretty much going with their regular starting lineup. The Cardinals have made a change or two, mainly because of the left-hand pitcher, Lolich, in there for Detroit. So here are the batting orders, beginning with the visiting team, the American League champion Detroit Tigers. The leadoff man will be Dick McAuliffe, the second baseman. That's McAuliffe at second base. Batting number two is Mickey Stanley. Stanley batting second and playing at shortstop. Al Kaline, so far the hero for the Tigers from a batting standpoint in the World Series. Batting number three, and he's stationed at right field. For the cleanup hitter for Detroit, the first baseman, Norman Cash. That's Cash at first base, batting number four. For the fifth batter is a left fielder, Willie Horton. Horton in left. Then it's Jim Northrup, the center fielder. Northrup in center. He's followed by Tiger catcher, and number seven batter, Bill Freehand. Freehand the catcher. Don Wirt, that's number eight, and he is at third base. It's Wirt at third. The number nine batter and the Tiger pitcher is Mickey Lolich. Now on the public address here at Bush Memorial Stadium, uh, the Tigers, led by manager Mayo Smith, are being introduced. Here's the St. Louis Cardinal lineup. The world champions will lead off with Lou Brock, their left fielder. That's Brock and left. Julian Javier, the number two batter, one of the leading hitters with a 391 average. He's been moved up to number two. He's playing second base. Well, the third hitter is Kurt Flood. Flood in center field. Then it's Orlando Cepeda batting clean up and playing first base. 
The number five batter for the Cardinals, third baseman Mike Shannon. That's Shannon at third. Batting sixth and catching Tim McCarver. McCarver catching. Roger Maris, despite the left-hand pitcher, is in there at right field. He's batting number seven. Maris in right. Dal Maxwell is the shortstop and the number eight hitter. And on the mound, the big, hard-throwing right-hander, Bob Gibson. Gibson is batting number nine. Ernie Harwell and Pee Wee Reese. The seventh game of the World Series, 1968 in St. Louis. The ovation is for Bob Gibson, the great Cardinal pitcher, going to the mound now, ready to begin his duties here in this crucial game. Now, the umpires for the seventh game, it'll be Tom Gorman of the National League behind the plate. Jim Honachick is at first base. He represents the American League. The National League representative, Stan Landis, is out behind second. At third base, Bill Kenneman of the American League. And down the line, Doug Harvey is in left field. He represents the National League. And down the line in right, Bill Haller from the American League. Each of these two pitchers, Bob Gibson and Mickey Lolich, has won two games. Each gunning for the third victory in the series. And if Gibson can do it, he'll be the first in uh, World Series history to do it twice. Beautiful baseball day. It's uh, very pleasant, almost no breeze at all. Bright, sunny afternoon in St. Louis. And Dick McAuliffe will lead off for Detroit. The Cardinals will have Shannon at third, Maxwell at short, Javier at second, Cepeda at first. In the outfield, it's Brock in left, Flood in center, Maris in right, McCarver the catcher, and Gibson now getting ready to go to work. The left hand batting McAuliffe. Stepping in, a 261 batting average for Richard. And here's the windup and the first pitch of the game. It's a strike on the outside corner. Well, there's Gibson's pattern right there, Pee Wee. Go to the outside corner. Yes, he has. That's a, that is it, and he can do this with the best of them. Here's the windup and the pitch to McAuliffe. Swing on and miss. Strike two. Cardiff has one home run in the series. He's knocked in three runs. The outfield is deep to right. The strike two delivered to McAuliffe. High, fastball. One ball, two strikes. Bob Gibson ready to go. The windup, the pitch to McAuliffe. It's outside. The count is 2-2. in the ball game. McAuliffe waiting on a 2-2 delivery from Gibson. He stops in the middle of his motion. Time called by Tom Gorman to the home plate. McAuliffe trying to dig himself in there. Leans in to wait on the 2-2 delivery. Here it comes. He takes the ball. Oh. 3-2. Oh, McAuliffe has taken Gibson to the full count here in the leadoff spot. Gibson ready, winds, kicks, delivers. Here's a fly ball. Hit off of first base, a foul. Cepeda near the seat. Might have a chance. He's right there, reaches in, makes the catch. Well, he didn't have much room, Pee Wee. No, he did. In fact, he caught that ball in those temporary seats down out in front of, uh, right out in front of first base. He reached in about two feet and caught it. Here's Mickey Stanley, the Detroit shortstop. Young man from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Under tremendous pressure in this series, moving to a new position where he's played very well. He's batting 208. Right hand about his swings and misses on a fastball. Letter high. One strike on Stanley. Center field of flood a little bit to right center on Mickey Stanley. No score, first inning. Here's a line drive to Gibson for the out. has quick reflexes, Mr. Reese. Well, he's a great athlete, Ernie. 
And you'll notice today, if there's anyone, you'll very seldom ever see anyone run on him. Of course, Detroit is not a bunting ball club, but he feels that position just like an infielder. That ball was hit just like a shot. He just reached out and picked it off like a cherry. Here is Al Kaline batting 440 in the series, and he takes the ball in close. Each of these gentlemen has great respect for the other one. Gibson, the pitcher, Kaline, the batter. No score, first inning. Two out, nobody on. Now the windup by Bob Gibson. The pitch is swung on and hit high and fouled off a third. It may be out of play. Yep, it will be. Shannon comes over, but it's in the seat. Kaline has uh, eight RBIs and two home runs. His 11 hits uh, leads the Tiger team. Waits now on a 1-1 delivery from Gibson. It's Mo ball two. Two and one. Outfield is almost straight away. The infield is deep. Javier pulled to his uh, right at a deep second base. Over a little bit nearer the bag. The wind up by Gibson. The 2-1 delivery. Ball outside. Fast ball. Low and away. We're just underway in St. Louis, game number seven. It's the first inning. The Tigers have sent two men up. Gibson has retired the two. Two down, nobody on. K-line has worked Gibson to a 3-1 count. And the Cardinal right-hander rocks and pitches. Swing and a foul out of play on the first base side. Norman Cash the on-deck circle for Detroit. Gibson uh, looks him over, ready to go to work again. The full count pitch to K-Line. Stuck him out. Curveball. Side retired. One, two, three. And at the end of a half inning, Detroit nothing. The Cardinals coming to bat. Mr. Reese, uh, so far, Mr. Gibson uh, looking very sharp in that opening inning. Well, I would think so, and it's one thing about Bob Gibson. Anything he starts, at least he did in 1968, season, he finishes. He pitched 28 complete games and 34 starts and was not knocked out one time. Pretty tough, I would say. You're not kidding. <laughs> Well, now we look at the Tiger left-handed Mickey Lolich, who, uh, like Gibson, is seeking his third series win in this 1968 World Series, and he'll be facing the very fine leadoff man, Lou Brock. Brock has 12 hits. His batting average is 480. What a great series he's had. He's tied his own uh, stolen base record of this series with seven. Now leans in, left-handed batter facing the Tiger left-handed Mickey Lonich. No score. We're just starting the last half of the first inning in St. Louis. He takes a curve outside. Ball one. Wirt is laying in close at third. Stanley is at shortstop, but caught up at second. Cash at first. The Detroit outfield, Horton in left, north of and center, K-line in right. The catcher is freehand, the pitcher, Lolich. Uh, Mickey getting his sign for Bill freehand, ready to go to work again. The 1-0 pitch to lead off man, Brock, swung on and beaten foul. Off the plate and over toward the Cardinal bench. 1-1, one one, the count on him. Lolich with only two days rest, going to the mound for the Tigers. He says sometimes when he's... Uh, Fairly tired that his uh, fastball will sink a little bit more for him. Left hander ready to go to work. Now the wind up and the pitch. Brock swings a bounding ball to second. Big hop from McCauley. Throw to Cash. He's out. One up and one away. William Javier, the batter now. He's had a fine series of the bat. A 391 average. Knocked in three runs. Tom Gorman of the National League umpiring behind the bat on a chick. Landis, Kinnaman on the bases. Doug Harvey down the left field line. Bill Haller down the right field line. This game is scoreless in St. Louis. It's the last half of the first inning. Lolich 
ready to go to work on the right-hand batting Javier. He swings as a fly ball to center. Northrop is there, puts it away for the out. Two down and nobody on. And here is Kurt Flood, who has been batting number two in red changing batting order, moved to the number three spot. Average is 250. Oh. Lolich delivers. Here's a ball in close. He checked his swing. Blood, one time Cincinnati player, 11 years with the Cardinals. Leaning and waiting now. Two out, nobody on, no score. Here's a cut and a miss. One and one. Like most of the cards, he's appearing in his third World Series. Most of the Tigers have no World Series experience. Flood takes a slow one that breaks in close. Two and one, the count on him. Cepeda waiting on deck for the cards. The game scoreless. Neither team has uh, seen a runner yet. Now the motion by the left-hander Lolich. The pitch on the way. Taken for a ball. Him close. He started to go and held off. Lolich first joined the Detroit club in 63, coming up from Syracuse. He's been a regular starter since then. Here's the wind-up. The pitch. Swung on. Drive into right center, may drop in, it does. Fielded on one hop by K-Line, and there is the first hit and the first runner of the game. Flood drops a single into right center, and the Cardinals have a man on. Well, we can kind of, kind of take a look, see what Red Shane is going to do here. They have been a running ball club all year. Of course, Flood is not the base fielder that Brock is, but he does have two stolen bases in this series. Let's see if they're going to run. The batter is Cepeda with a 280 batting mark of the series. Cash will hold on the bag over there with Flood. The outfield will uh, play deep and around the left a little bit. The infield back. Orlando Cepeda, right-hand batting first baseman. Flood edging off at first base. Doesn't go. The pitch is swung on and beaten foul on a high hop down past the third base coach, Joe Schultz. Dick Sisler is the first base coach for the Cardinals. There are two out and one on. The game scoreless in the first inning. After Lovich retired to Brock and Javier. Blood single to right center. The Tigers in their first half of the first went down one, two, three before the slants of Gibson. Now the set by the left hand of Lovich to lift the first base. Flood draws a throw and gets back. He edges off again, uh, trying to test his lead. And Cepeda steps away from the plate. Now Orlando back in to face Lolich. The pitch is a ball low, fastball, one and one. Shannon will be the next Cardinal batter. We've got a scoreless tie in the first inning at Bush Memorial Stadium. Blood edging off again. The pitch. Swing and a miss on a high hard one. One ball, two strikes. That was the hardest that uh, Lolich has thrown so far. The pitch might have been out of the strike zone. With a count of one ball and two strikes on Cepeda, this may be a good spot for Flood to run right here. He's edging off, and the pitch fouled away. So the count is still one ball, two strikes. We're backing up and playing much deeper at third base now. score first inning. The Cardinals have a man on and two out. Now Flood 
Cubs so far are not edging off at first base. Cepeda waiting at the plate on Lodich. Blood moves off a little bit, doesn't go. The pitch is swung on a drive foul to deep left field. Hit the ball very hard, but he pulled it down the line in the corner. One ball, two strikes on Orlando Cepeda. Mickey Lolich tugging his cap out there now. Still ahead of the other. And he sets himself to keep an eye on the run at first base, Kurt Flood. Now the set by Mickey, the look over to first base. Flood edges off again. Doesn't go. The pitch he swung on is a long foul fly to the other field to right. So we got a new supply of baseballs for Mr. Gorman. <laughs> the painter testing all directions here. Two home runs of this series and six RBIs. Nobody on either team has more than two homers. So the Cardinal fans here in their ballpark beginning their rhythmic applause. Blood edges off. The pitch is a curve low. 2-2. Two -two. That's the count. Two out. Man on first. No score. First inning. Ideal weather conditions in St. Louis today. The Pater stands very deep in the batter's box, waiting on a 2 2 delivery. It goes flood. The pitch is taken to throw by freehand a second, not in time, stolen base. Gets his third steal in three attempts, and he made it rather easily. McCullough came over to cover. The throw was slightly high, but uh, Flood was in there easily anyhow. So the Cardinals have a man in the scoring position in the first inning with two outs. Flood at second base, single in the stolen base. The count is three and two on Orlando Cepeda. Here's the stretch by Lolich. And the pitch. It's a ball low. Two men on for the Cardinals after the walk. And Mike Shannon, who's been dangerous with a stick, especially in clutch situations, sets up. Ernie, it looks just a little bit like I was watching Lolich on his move to first base against Flood. And the first time that Flood decided he wanted to go, he took off. I don't believe Mickey has a real good move to first base, does he? No, he doesn't, really. Just the uh, fact that he's looking over there and he's left-handed is uh, about the most help he's got. Well, I've seen him in two games now. This is the third game, and I've never seen him make a real good move to first base. <laughs> Here's Shannon now, the right-handed batting third baseman waiting, and he takes a ball in close. A little bit on the low side, too. Two on, two out, no score. First inning, the Cardinals are threatening. Mike Shannon, a 280 batter for the series. Blooded second, Cepeda at first base. Both fair size leads. The pitch, Shannon swings and misses. It's like a breaking ball down around the knees. Down the lines here, it's 3.30 from home plate to the corners. Straight away center field, 414 feet. Up the power alleys and left and right center, 386. One and one, that's the count on Shannon. No score first inning. Two on, two out for the Cardinals. Here's the set by Lolich. The left-hander checks his runners. Now delivers, and Shannon swings. There's a drive to right field. K-line going over is there. He makes the catch to the side retire. And at the end of one inning... Of the Cardinals dubbing, Detroit dubbing. It's along with Ernie Harwell at Bush Stadium. A beautiful day here in St. Louis. Couldn't have a nicer day for a ball game. Bob Gibson against Mo Mickey Lolich both have two wins. In the first inning, the Tigers went down in order. McAuliffe, Stanley, and K-Line. 
had a little trouble getting the Cardinals out after Brock and Javier won out. Flood singles, Cepeda walked, then Shannon hit a line drive in the right field. We're ready to go in the top half of the second inning. The first hitter, Norm Cash, tell you all about it. Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Pee Wee. Cash batting 409 uh, for the series. He has nine hits. Gibson ready to go. The right-hander delivers. It's a ball outside to Norm Cash. Gibson, the only pitcher in series history who has won the deciding seventh game in two different series in 64 and 67. There's a foul ball back a third out of play. One and one, that's the count on Cash. The history of Norman Cash throughout most of his uh, Tiger seasons has been that he's hit very badly in the opening half and very well in the second half. There's a foul back of the plate in toward the press box area and down below it. One and two, the count on Cash. Cash has one home run in the series. Gibson, who has won seven series games in a row, goes into action again. The one-two pitch. Swing, there's a fly ball to right center, not very deep. Maris and Flood converging on it. Maris is there to his glove for the out. So the first four Tigers have drawn down in order. Not hit a ball on the ground yet. Here's Willie Horton, who has a 263 series batting record. Horton has a home run. He hit it here in uh, St. Louis. Gibson delivers, and he backs him up with a fastball. Well, the Tigers have not had a runner yet. The game is scoreless. Inning number two in St. Louis. Seventh game of the World Series. Now the windup by Gibson. The pitch, fastball, fouled out of play. 1-1, one, one, that's the count on Hort. One out and the base is empty. Here's the windup, the pitch to Willie Horton. Strike called on the inside corner. One ball, two strikes. Cardinals have been involved in six previous seven-game series and won all six. The pitch, it's a ball. He tried for the far corner and didn't get it. Infield deep on Horton, the outfield also back. One out of the base is empty. Gibson ready to go to action to wind up the pitch. Swing and a foul. Over the screen and out of play. Right down below us, behind the plate. 2-2 two, two on Willie Horton. Gibson, as a youngster, almost died of pneumonia. And, uh, rheumatic fever, asthma. And a real tough time. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled off, right down below us. Second inning, the Tigers at bat. They've got the bases empty, and there's one away. Gibson ready to go to work again. Horton waiting at the plate, the 2-2 pitch. Struck him out, swinging on a curve. He tried to hold up. The pitch was in a little bit, and he fanned. That's the second strikeout for Gibson. Ernie, I'm sure that Gibson did not want to throw that pitch there, but he got away with it. Tim McCarver had moved outside. He looked like he wanted that curveball, the slider to break outside. He got it inside, just got the inside corner. And Horton is so close to that plate, it fouled him up. Here's Northrop batting now, and he takes a high one for ball. Jim Northrop hitting 208. He featured the 10 run inning here yesterday with a Grand Slam home run. He has two homers for the series. Left hand batter takes a high one, 2 0 oh, to count on Northrop. Gibson has set down the first five Tigers. Two of them on strikes. One fly ball, one line drive to Gibson himself, and a foul to Cepeda for the other one. No ground balls yet. Northrop looks at a strike. Above the knees, inside corner. The wind up, the pitch. Foul out of play. 2-2 two -two the count on Northrop. Score 
second inning. Detroit at bat. They've got the bases empty and two down. Bob Gibson gunning for his third series victory. Winds and pitches. And it's a check swing for a ball. 3-2. That was a breaking pitch in close. Northrop started and held off. Outfield deep to right on Northrop, the infield back. Now the full count pitch. He swings and strikes out. And at the end of an inning and a half, it's Detroit nothing, St. Louis nothing. the second inning. Amy Reese along with Ernie Harwell. And Gibson has looked sharp in his two innings. He has struck out three. Has not without a base runner. We're going to the bottom half of the second inning. Nicky always had a, had a little bit of trouble in the first inning after getting two men out. Flood got a base hit. Cepeda walked. And Shannon hit a ball hard out in the right field. Let's see what he's going to do this inning. Tim McCarver, Roger Maris, and Dal Maxwell. Ernie Harwell. Well, McCarver batting 3-3-3, and incidentally, uh, those three strikeouts uh, by Gibson all on 3-2 uh, pitches and all on breaking ball. No score. We're in the second inning. Tim McCarver. Memphis, Tennessee, facing Mickey Lovich. There's a foul ball hit on the ground out of play over toward the first base side. Mickey Lolich, native of Portland, Oregon, Croatian descent. One-time clubhouse boy out there in the uh, Portland clubhouse. Strike one pitch to McCarver. He ducks away from a high hard one. One and one to count on ten. McCarver has uh, two triples in this series and one home run. He's knocked in four runs. Sun's not quite as bright as it was when the game started. Sort of a haze hanging over this uh, beautiful ballpark now. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball. About leather high and in close. One ball, two strikes. Third World Series for McCarver. Uh, leading off for the St. Louis Cardinals here in the scoreless tie in the second. Here's the motion, the pitch by Lolich. Fouled out of play. Back of the screen. One and two to count. Well, one of those lower deck outfielders made a good catch of that one, I guess. Good man from Clayton, Missouri. Lolich uh, checking his sign, ready to go again now. Nobody on, nobody out. No score. Here's the pitch. McCarver takes the ball. High, 2-2. Two -two. Clayton, Missouri. Yes, sir. That's right near here. <laughs> Lomich versus McCarver in this situation. Here's the windup by Mickey, and the pitch on the way. Popped foul. It'll be out of play. That one back of the plate in the lower deck. Tigers have won the last two games to make a real World Series out of this one. Things look dismal for their side until the Monday game. They came from behind to win that one and then won the game yesterday. But their power hitting tied the series. Here's a 2-2 pitch. It's a ball low. A tempting one, but McCarver held off. Full count. McCarver is supposed to hit left-handers about as well as he hits right-handers. He hits them off the left field quite a bit. As we notice, Willie Hart is playing in a little bit toward that left field end, almost like a right-handed pull hitter. Well, let's see what Lolich gives him now on the full count delivery. No score. We're in the second inning. Here's the pitch. Walked in. High and away with a fastball. That is the second walk off Lolich. A conference on the mound, Freehand and Lolich. 
talking over the situation, and here is Rod Jamari. Roger told uh, Pee Wee Reese in his three-game interview that he'd been with three winners and three losers in World Series competition. And this is the rubber World Series and his final appearance in a baseball uniform right here today. against the left-hander. Man on first, McCarver. There's no score. The Cardinals are batting in the second. Word is about even with the back at third base. Stanley and McCarver up a step or so around second. There's a ball outside. Maris uh, told uh, Pee Wee that he so far had had not too much success against Lodis. Didn't he, Pee Wee, in his uh, regular season career in the American League? Oh, that's right. And he also said that this was the first time that he had hit against a left-hander all year and not even in batting practice and did not let, have too much luck against Lowell. He swings and fouls it off on the screen. Horton is uh, pulled in a little close in left field. Center field to Northrop is uh, slightly over to right. Talking about Roger Maris retiring after today's game, so will another great ball player by the name of Eddie Matthews of the Tigers. This is his last game. And Eddie's been a big help to the Tigers this year. He's a fellow that they all look up to. Here's the 1-1 pitch coming up. Maris pops it up. Foul ball between home and first near the Cardinal dugout. Might be out of play. Cash comes over. He can't get it. On the roof of the dugout. Well, Norman went into that dugout, but the ball was unavailable. It hit the roof. <laughs> we lost cash, or he went right in into the Cardinal dugout. No score. We're in the second inning. The Cardinals at bat. They've got a man on McCarver at first base. Nobody out of the count. Ball one, two strikes on Roger Maris. Carver uh, getting a little bit of a lead. Not much, though, with their first base. Cash is holding on the bag with him. Maris waits. The pitch swung on as a bounding ball to Stanley. Touches second on the short hop. Throws to first base. It's a double play. Apparently, uh, McCarver thought that Stanley had caught the ball in the air. He went back to first base. But the play went Stanley unassisted at second for the force out of McCarver. And then he fired over to first base when Cash to get uh, Roger Maris for the double play. Ernie, this Mickey Stanley keeps making good plays. He's done a wonderful job at shortstop. I understand that Mr. Mayo Smith does not intend to play him at shortstop next year. Put him back out in center field. He's looked mighty good there. He may make Mayo change his mind. Here's Dow Maxwell now looking for his first World Series hit. He's 0 for 20. No score, second inning. There are two out and nobody on. There's a bounding ball hit toward short, cut off by third baseman Work. Throw to cash, he's out. Side retired, and at the end of two, the Cardinals nothing, the Tigers nothing. Freehand leading off for the short in the third, and he takes the ball wide. A curve ball low and away from right hand of Bob Gibson. Freehand has one hit. He picked it up yesterday. One for 20 in the World Series competition. The game is scoreless. Third inning, Detroit at bat. Strike on the outside corner. Curve caught that corner for Gibson to count as even. One and one on Freehand. Gibson is fanned at three. He struck out the last two minutes face. There's a drive to center field. Flood is there waiting. Makes the catch for the out. The ball hit rather well, but right to the glove of the center field of Flood. The Tigers do not have a hit yet. They have not yet hit a ball on the ground off Gibson. Here is Don Wirtz, the third baseman with an average of 071. He has one hit in 14 trips. The Tigers have had very little firepower in their bottom three uh, men in the batting order. Freehand and Wirtz have two hits between them for the whole series. And then you get to the pitcher. There's a strike call. Gibson uh, fed word a fastball to start him off. The game is scoreless in the third in St. Louis. Now Bob Gibson kicks and deals. Here's a strike on the outside corner. Work started to go. Held off. It got the strike zone anyhow. And the 
Cardinal right-hander. Looks for his sign. The strike two pitch to work. Struck him out. The fourth strikeout. The Tiger batter will be the pitcher, Mickey Lolich. Uh, the first eight Detroiters have gone down in a row. Lolich uh, hit a home run in this ballpark. In the second game of the World Series, the only home run he's ever hit in his professional career. He takes a strike from Gibson. Lolich has three hits and eight turns at bat in the series. Gibson winds, delivers. It's a cut and a miss on a fastball. Jimmy just blazing it by. Somebody asked Mickey, he said, you've been hitting pretty good in this series beside pitching. And Mickey said, well, I may have luck against Gibson with his control. He may hit my bat. But he did hit him then. No, sir. Gibson, and at the end of two and one half innings, it is Cardinals nothing to short nothing. Well, Bob Gibson has 32 strikeouts now for the series, breaking his own record of 31, set in 64, and the great ovation was for Gibson himself as he steps to the plate to face Mickey Lovitz, and he takes the ball in close, Mickey curved him. has allowed uh, one hit and walk two. The game is scoreless in the third in St. Louis. A ball oh, to the pitcher Gibson, 2 at oh. Gibson with one hit, a home run in five ticks. Now the motion and the pitch. Strike inside corner fastball, two and one. Gibson, a right hand batter. Waiting now on the left hand of Lolich, his next delivery. The pitch. Swing and a foul back at the plate, two two. Neither team able to break through the scoreless barrier. No score, third inning. On the windup, the 2-2 pitch to Gibson. Tapper hit toward short, cut off by third baseman Wirt. Throw to Cash, he got him. And there's one up and one away for the Cardinals in their third. Here comes leadoff man Lou Brock. With 12 hits for the series. First time up, he bounced out to second base from McCullough. Short has no runs, no hits, no errors. St. Louis, no runs, one hit, and no errors. Well, the battle has moved into the last half to third. Here's the windup and the pitch. He takes a strike on the outside corner. batting 480. No one has ever hit higher than 500 in the World Series that has lasted uh, more than four games. Bombing ball hit to second base. To the glove side goes McCormick. Throws him out over to Cash. And there are two down in the St. Louis third. Well, these two teams are quite a contrast the way they've gone out so far. The Cardinals hit the ball on the ground most of the time. And the Tigers have not hit a ground ball yet. Now Gibson. Here is Julian Javier, who uh, hit a fly ball on the first pitch to him in the first inning. He fly to Northrop, the Tigers center fielder. The game is scoreless. The cards at bat with two out, nobody on. It's the last half of the third inning. Javier batting uh, number two in the Red Chain Deans batting order. Swings it's a tapper on a big hop to work. The throw to cash. It's an easy third out, and the side retired one, two, three. At the end of three, Detroit nothing, St. Louis nothing. Three innings of game number seven in the World Series. Neither team able to score. The Cardinals have the game's only hit, a single by flood with two out of the first inning. Now Dick McCarthy will lead off for the Tigers in the fourth against Gibson, and our pleasure to tune in on Pee Wee Reese. Thank you, Ernie. 
It's been all Bob Gibson so far. Nicky Lola's had a little trouble in the first inning, but he has settled down. So I will never see a score in this ball game the way these two fellows look right now. Nick McAuliffe leading things off the Tigers. Bob Gibson, the kick. Has the ball hit pretty hard out in the right field. Roger Mayer should have no trouble with it. Back underneath it and takes it for out number one. So Gibson, in three and a third innings, he has struck out five. There has not been a ball hit on the ground. Maris has had two fly balls out in right field. Kurt Flood won in center field, and Zapato won at first base. Mickey Stanley backs away from the pitch. Fastball in there. Ball strike one. I think that Gibson never does use the middle part of his plate. He just uses the inside three inches and the outside three inches. What control? Ball foul straight back, strike two on him. Tigers, no runs on no hits. No errors. The Cardinals, no runs on one hit and no errors. We're in the top half, the fourth thing is one away, Mickey Stanley. Hit a line drive. Hit a line drive his first time up right back at Bob Gibson. Fastball, high and outside, ball one. Gibson trying to get him to go for that high outside pitch with two strikes on him. One ball and two strikes on Stanley. The seventh and deciding game of the 68 World Series. Gibson against Lolich. Curveball on the ground out to Maxwell. Shorts up. He'll have to hurry. He can't. Has no chance. on that play. He got deep on it, and then he came up ready to throw, and he couldn't let the ball go. I think Stanley would have beaten it anyway, and uh, Maxwell uh, saved a possible overthrow had he uh, let the ball go. So it will be scored as a single, the first hit off Gibson. So the Tigers have their first base runner. Al Kaline is the hitter. The first pitch to him is a fastball just missed, a little outside. Gibson wanted that one. Kaline checking with Tony Cuccinello at third, his coach. At first base is Wally Moses. Kaline can handle the bat, and Mickey Stanley at first can run. He led the Tigers in stolen bases. A swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. And again, Kaline checks with Cuccinello. He gives the signs down at third to the belt, to the cap. Backs up in that coach's box. They're playing Kaline straight away. Stanley with a short lead at first base. Gibson has a good move over there. Fastball. Little outside. Ball two. Kaline's the kind of hitter who, against Gibson, he might just try to go to right. The only trouble with having a hit and run with a fellow like Gibson, you miss too many pitches. That's right. Two balls, one strike. Gibson looks over at Stanley. Curveball into the dirt of Slider. Got the carver on the hand. There's a foul tip. That's what the is doing, shaking his hand. Count is two and two. Looked like that ball was low in the dirt. On the way, two and two on Al Kaline. Stanley in first base. Gibson sets. Looks over at Stanley. Takes a little time. Here's the pitch. The lazy loop at Sopate at first base going over near the stands. Can he get to it? Not this one. And the count remains two and two. And the Tigers trying to come back to win this seventh game here, winning the seventh game after trailing three games to one to be the first team to do that since the 1958 series. The Yankees did it against the Braves. Two balls, two strikes on Al Kaline. One away. When the top half, the fourth thing, no score in this ball game. That's all. Party looking. Well, there you can see the type of pitcher Gibson is. Curveball, slider to Al Kaline. And then he came with that real good fastball just on the outside corner, and Al did not even make an offer at it. 
So that's the sixth strikeout for Bob Gibson. Brings up Norm Cash. Stanley still on at first. Cepeda holding close. Javier back out on the grass at second base. Gibson, the kick. There's a ball hit hard, but it's foul. And Cash, who has tremendous power, he got out in front of that one. Hit it way in the upper deck down that right field line, but it was foul by quite a few feet. One strike on him. McCarver giving the sign. Gibson set. Here's a kick in the pitch, and he swings and misses. Strike two. Gibson in the first game struck out 17 men. Just had a record. He has nothing but records. On at first base, Mickey Stanley. Two strikes on Norm Cash. It's two away. Gibson takes a little bit more time than usual. Cash backs out of there. Tom Gorman, the umpire behind home plate. He's from the National League. Two strikes on Norm Cash. Here is the pitch. Way outside. Ball one. I told you, Stanley at first base. A good base runner. One ball, two strikes on Norm Cash. Here's the pitch. Her ball high and outside. Makes the count two and two. Each club has one hit. One by Stanley. For the Tigers and one by front of the Cardinals. Here's the two and two pitch. A ground ball out to the shortstop, but Shannon cuts over in front of him and takes it and over to Cepeda, and that's off for Norm Cash. And that's off for the Tigers in the top half of the fourth inning. So after three and a half innings, a play. Detroit nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Cardinals coming to bat in the fourth inning. The game is scored. It's 18 no runs and one hit. The Cardinals uh, had a threat going in the opening inning on a two-out single by Flood. Stole second. Cepeda walked. They couldn't score. Walked to McCarver. Let off the second. He was a race in a double play. The Tigers have only one hit and one runner. Stanley, a single in the fourth. Now back to Pee Wee. Okay, Eddie. Kurt Flood leading things off the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Mickey Lodge. First pitch is outside. Ball one. Kurt Flood got a base hit. In the first inning with two men out, he stole second. Then Cepeda walked, but they got standing out on the line drive out to the right field. That ball a little bit too high, ball two. Today's attendance, 54,692. A beautiful day for a ball game here at Bush Stadium. In St. Louis, the seventh and final game of the World Series. There's a ball hit out in the right field. That ball is foul. Went to the opposite field with kind of two balls and no strikes on him. Just missing down that right field line. Let's give the umpires. Behind home plate, Tom Gorman of the National League. Honachek of the American League at first base. Lannis of the National League at second base. Kinnaman, American League at third base. Down that left field line, Harvey of the National League. The right field line, Haller of the American League. Down the right field line. Two balls, one strike on Kurt Flood. Ball hit hard. Stanley on a short hop. He'll have to hurry. He got him. Well, that play showed that Stanley's quick reflexes and the way he's been able to adapt himself at shortstop. He got the ball on a short hop but couldn't hold it, bobbled it momentarily, and recovered it even in time to get the fleet flood. You think Mayo may play him at shortstop? <laughs> I think he's got to. <laughs> was a short hop. He fumbled the ball, but right out in front of him, and he grabbed on it, and the good arm that he has, Flood can go, but he threw him out. Cepeda's a hitter. Ball hit hard, but it's going to foul down the right field line. It's one out. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Scattered information. The first series winner 
each got $1,182. There's a ground ball out to Don Ward. He knocks the ball down. He'll have to hurry to get the fader. Over to Don Cash, and he got him. Well, there's two plays. One with a shortstop standing. Fumble the ball. Threw out flood. Don Ward juggled the ball, picked it up, and threw out Cepeda. Those, both of those balls were hit hard. Quick recoveries by both of those fellas. Talking about that first series when it's getting $1,182 and the loser's share was $200. What a difference, Ernie. Yes, sir. Mike Shannon takes the first pitch. It's in there. Curveball. Strike one. Quickly, Lola gets two down here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. One strike on Shannon. And that pitch is foul back. Strike two. Looks like this Lola just settled it down to do a little pitching. After the first inning, he has faced three, six, eight men. That is all. Struck him out on a high fastball. So that's all for Shannon. That's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. So after four full innings, the Tigers nothing, the Cardinals nothing. Ernie Harwell along with Jimmy Reed. Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis. The seventh game of the World Series. Scoreless. Each team, no runs, one hit. No errors as Gibson and Lolich. Developing into a great pitching duel here in St. Louis. Kirk Flood has the St. Louis hit a single with two out of the first inning. Mickey Stanley had a single with one out of the fourth for the Tigers only in. Willie Horton, the batter, the announcer, Pee Wee Reese. Thank you, Ernie. Yes, sir. Quite a pitcher's duel between Bob Gibson and Mickey Lola. Willie Horton starts, checks his swing. It's high and inside, ball one. Horton, the first time up, struck out. For well, the second strikeout for Bob Gibson, he has six in this game. The pump by Gibson, curveball, a little high, ball two. The fellow has, with one swing, can put the Tigers out in front. He had 36 homers in 68. Tremendous power. The 2-0 and pitch, curveball, inside, ball three. Checking with Tony Cuccinello down at third base. Where they let him hit this 3-0 pitch. With his power, you never can tell. Here it is, the kick. Fastball just got that outside corner. Strike one. Three balls, one strike on Willie Hart. He's ready to get things off the Tigers here in the top half of the fifth inning. No score in this ball game. One hit for the Tigers, one hit for the Cardinals. Gibson pitches. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Well, you can see what kind of pitcher Gibson is. Three balls. No strikes on Harton. Gibson hits that outside corner on the next two pitches. Three and two is the count on Willie Harton. No one away. Gibson winds, kicks. Here's the pitch. Ball is popped up. Cepeda over at first base, but Javier says, I'll take it in front of Cepeda. And there is one out. has not walked the man. Jim Northrup. He's all for one. He was a strikeout victim in the second inning. He has had two home runs in this series. The one yesterday with the bases loaded. He had 21 homers for the Tigers this year. One ball, no strike on him. Gibson checking with McCarver. Here's the pitch. It's popped up down the left field line. Maxwell going over. Shannon going over. Can he get to it? Shannon does. a nice running catch down that left field foul line to retire Jim Northup. So it's two away, and that brings up Bill Freehan. McCarver wants to go out to talk to Bob. 
Mr. Gibson said, yes, sir, I understand. Now then, they're ready. Freehan got his first hit in the series yesterday. He is now one for 21. He flied out to Kurt Flood in his, his first time up today. Gibson, pitch. Foul straight back, strike one. Cepeda at first, Javier at second, Maxwell at short, Shannon at third, Bach and left, Flood in center, Mass in right field, McCarver doing the catching, and Bob Gibson on the mound. The windup, the kick, ball hit hard out in the left field, Lou Bach going back on the warning track underneath it and takes it for the third out. That's all for freehand and that's all for the Tigers here in the top half of the fifth inning. So after four and a half innings of play, it's still Detroit nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Well, there's no score, and it uh, keeps rolling along this way. No runs, one hit, no errors on each side. Lolich uh, tuning up now, ready to face the Cardinals in the fifth inning. It'll be McCarver, Maris, and Maxwell, the first three scheduled batters against him. Well, the Cardinals had a threat going in the opening inning after Lodich retired the first two. Flood single stole second. Cepeda walked, but Shannon was retired on a fly ball to right. And McCarver walked to start the second with the race in a double play. Everybody since then hit ground balls until Shannon struck out the end of fourth inning. The Tigers have had only one runner. Now, that was Stanley, who had an infield hit to the shortstop Maxwell in the fourth inning with one out, and he was left at first base. So the pitchers have dominated this seventh game so far, and it remains a scoreless tie going into the last half of inning number five. Defensively for the Tigers, Matt Cash at first base, McAuliffe at second, Stanley at short, Ward at third, Horton in left, Nossip in center, Al Kaline in right, Bill Freehand doing the catching, and on the mound, Mickey Lowlich. First pitch to McCarver. That ball inside. And Tim walked his first time up today. Lowlich has walked two. But he was quickly erased as Roger Maris hit a line drive. As Sammy took on a shot up, stepped on second, and fired the first for the double play. The 1 0 pitch. He went around a curveball. He was looking for the fastball there. But Lowley came with a curveball, makes the count. One ball and one strike on Tim McCarver. Lowley has now shut out the Cardinals 12 innings in a row. And Gibson has blanked the Tigers 10 innings in a row. These fellows are doing some kind of pitching. Ball hit hard. Stanley. Hot Stanley out in left field. Willie Harton up with the ball. McCarver makes the turn at first. As we told you, McCarver, especially against the left-hander, hits a lot of balls in the left field, and he sliced that ball off. It hit out in front of Stanley and stayed down on the ground. He could not come up with the ball. It was a real tough chance. It's a base hit for McCarver, and the hitter is Roger Maris. Lowley's first pitch to him, and Maris hits it hard down at first baseline. Foul. On deck circle, Dow Maxwell. I'm kidding, Dow. Before the, today's game, you know, he came into this game 0 for 20, but he has hit the ball hard. He's a seaweed. Today is the day. One strike on Roger Maris. McCarver on at first. Swing and a miss, strike two. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. The Tigers have one hit. Off Gibson, Mickey Stanley. Got it. The Cardinals have two hits. One by Flood and one by Tim McCarver. On at first base right now. Two strikes on Roger Maris. Lowley looks over at McCarver. Here's the pitch. Breaking pitch. High. Ball one. Maris came into this game. Three for 16. One ball, two strike. Lowley looks over at McCarver at first base. Here's the pitch. He took him out. Dal Max 
Haskell coming into the batter's box free and out off to Mickey Loley. Talking to Nash before the game. He said he had a little trouble with Loley. Asked him how he pitched him. He said he gave me that curve on the outside and then runs that sinker in on me. Well, right there was a breaking pitch. Out away from Rogers. May not have been a strike, but he went for it. And that's the second strikeout for Mickey Lolich. Dal Maxwell, first pitch to him. High and outside, ball one. Bob Gibson in the on-deck circle. At first base, coaching for the Cardinals, Dick Sittler. At third base, Joe Schultz. One away. Lolich, set. Looks over at McCarver. There's a kick, there goes McCarver. The ball is popped up, though. Better hurry back. Norm Cash underneath it in foul territory. And he throws the ball to McCarver. Something at first, and McCarver had to slide back in there. So they had McCarver going. I'm sure you know now for the round of applause he got when he stepped in there is the hitter. It's two away. McCarver started descending off of the base hit. Lowly struck out Mares, and Maxwell popped up. Bob gets in there right now. McCarver still at first. Here's the pitch. It popped up out into short center field. McAuliffe's going back underneath it and calls for it and takes it for out number three. And that's all for Gibson. And that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. So the score after foul floating, Detroit nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Well, two great pitchers tied up against each other here at Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis in the seventh game of the World Series. Detroit through five innings, no runs, one hit, no errors. Cardinals, no runs, two hits, and no errors. Gibson pitching for the world champion Cardinals, Mickey Lolich, the pitcher for the American League champion Detroit Tigers. Now Gibson ready to face Tiger third baseman Don Wirt, and back to the mic comes Pee Wee Reese. Thank you, Ernie. Don Wirt struck out his first time up. There's a ball popped up out into center field. Kirk play will have no trouble with it. Underneath it and takes it for out number one. Well, that's four straight men that have hit the ball in the air. Martin, Martin, free hand and work. That brings up Mickey Lowish. He gets a nice hand. And this game is moving right along. We're already in the top half of the sixth inning. First pitch to strike to Lowish. The wind up, the kick. Ball hit hard. Javier catches it. On one hop, flips the ball over to Cepeda. So it's two up and two down. Ball hit on one hop to Javier, and he caught a little bit like a football. But he was just trying to block it. That's what he did. He knew he had plenty of time with Lowly's running. That brings up Dick Mc... And it's two away. McCullough popped up to the first baseman and flat out to Roger Maris in right field. The first pitch to him. A curveball in there for call strike one. And this gets it is sharp. He has already struck out six men. McCullough with that wide open stance of his, that weight on his back foot, fastball a little bit too low, ball one. The Tigers have one hit by Stanley. The Cardinals have two, one by Flood and one by Tim McCarver. And we're already in the sixth inning. It has been pitching today. Gibson, fastball. Outside, ball two. McAuliffe has one home run in the series. Three runs batted in. Two balls, one strike. Here's the kick, the pitch. Hit him on a foot. Gibson retrieves the ball. 
flips the ball over to the first base umpire. Jim Honachick said it's all right. Counts two and two on Dick McAuliffe. Gibson on that rubber. He's always ready. McCarver will give him the sign. Here's the wind up the kick. A curveball hit out into center field. Kurt Flood underneath it. And takes it to the third out. That ball for the call up and all for the Tigers here in the top half of the sixth inning. The score at five and a half innings of play. It's still Detroit nothing and the Cardinals nothing. has uh, been fabulous in his pitching. The Tigers have hit only two balls on the ground. Cash grounded the third and the fourth inning. Lolich grounded the second and the sixth. They have only one hit. Lolich has been just about as sharp. He's allowed a single to Flood and a single to McCarver. The game is scoreless going to the last half of the sixth inning. The Cardinals at bat. And here's Mr. Reese again. Thank you, Ernie. Lou Brock leading things off the Cardinals. The bottom half the sixth inning. He's 0 for 2. Granted out to McCullough. Both times up today. Outside ball one. Brock. Made a bluff like he was going to bunt. We have not seen him bunt in this series. They say he does not bunt too much. He's had three doubles, one triple, two home runs, five runs batted in this series. That's pretty good. Curveball outside. Ball two. And he has seven stolen bases. Brock checks with his coach, Joe Schultz, down at third base. And they would like to get this man on the base. He seems to get a ball club moving. The count is two balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Base hit out in the left field. does to the fans. They're howling for Brock to go. And don't you worry. He will be going sometime while he's on that sack. Javier, who can handle the bat, can hit the ball in the right field. He's batting second. There's no one out. Brock is on. Lowly looking for his sign from Bill Freehand. Brock with a good lead at first base. Here's the pitch. Little outside, ball one. Brock just got his 13th hit in the series. And that ties a Danny Little second baseman by the name of Bobby Richardson's 1964 World Series record of 13 hits. Records being tied and records being broken. One ball, no strike on Javier. Brock with a big lead at first. Even a much larger lead right now. There he goes. They may have a chance at him. He's out. Well, here's what happened. Brock got what I thought was a tremendous lead. And then he went up a couple of more steps, just daring Lolich to throw the ball to first base. Lolich did, and Brock, I'm sure, had in mind of beating the throw to second base, and it was close, Ernie. It sure was, and it looked as if Lolich uh, may have known what a tremendous lead this fellow was uh, getting, and uh, maybe he could let him uh, decoy himself in the, into it a little bit. Anyway, uh, he took off and uh, outran the ball once before, but he didn't do it this time. Started to say he had done that one other time against Lowlich. But Lowlich came over there a little bit faster with this one. Javier with a count of one ball and no strikes on it. Curve ball. Too low, ball two. And here's a fella that they say is one of the real fine hitters against left handed pitching. He's 0 for 2 today. In the series, 
coming into today's game. He was batting in a cool 391. The count right now, two balls and no strikes on him. Lowly. The wind up, the kick. Curveball just got the inside corner. Makes the count, two balls and one strike. And Brock started this inning off with a base hit in the left field. He was picked off first, and I'm sure that's what he wanted, but he could not beat the throw in the second as Cash threw to Stanley. And they nipped him. The two and one pitch to Javier. Ball hit hard. Line drive right at Stanley at shortstop. So it's two away. So anytime you get that Brock on there, you see some action. Kurt Flood. He has one base hit today. Here's the pitch to him. Fastball, high and inside, ball one. Flood, now seven for 26 in the series. Count of one ball and no strikes on him. Lowledge, the big wind up. Here's the kick. Foul off the left. One ball and one strike. The seventh game and the final game of the 1968 World Series. There is no tomorrow. Both pitchers, Lowledge and Gibson, have won two. Looking for their third game. A one and one pitch to Flood. Checks, he swings inside. Two balls and one strike on Kurt Flood. Ernie Harwell and I'm Pee Wee Reese here at Bush Stadium. A beautiful day in St. Louis. We had rain yesterday, but we couldn't ask for a nicer day today. Two balls, one strike. The kick, the pitch. Ground ball out to shortstop. Stanley, he's up with the ball. He'll have to hurry, and they didn't get him. cheerleader for this Cardinal ball club. Here's the hitter. It's two away. Kurt Flood on at first base with his second hit of the day. He stole a base in the first inning. Two away. Lowlich taking a little time. He is ready now. Looks over at Flood at first. Here's the pitch. Curveball inside. Ball one. Cepeda has two home runs in the series. Six runs batted in. One ball, no strike on him. Lodich takes a look at Flood, who does not have too much of a lead. There's a curveball in there for call strike one. They play Cepeda straight away. And deep. Cepeda hits a lot of balls hard in the right center field. One ball, one strike on Cepeda. On at first base, Kurt Flood. There it goes Flood, and he picked him off at first. Don Cash running down to Dick McAuliffe. Now that McAuliffe is running him back to Mickey Lowe. Mickey Lowe has the ball. He's running him back to Stanley. Stanley is now running Flood down and takes it. Here's how the play went. One to three to four to one to six, and they finally trapped him down there. And that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. So the score after six full innings, the Tigers still nothing and the Cardinals nothing. We had rain yesterday, but we couldn't ask for a nicer day today. Two balls, one strike. The kick, the pitch. Ground ball out to shortstop. Stanley, he's up with the ball. He'll have to hurry, and they didn't get him.
the Feta. Better known as Top Car, and he is the cheerleader for this Cardinal ball club. Is the hitter. It's two away. Kurt Foot on at first base with his second hit of the day. He stole a base in the first inning. Two away. Lowlich taking a little time. He is ready now. Looks over at Foot at first. Here's the pitch. Curveball inside. Ball one. Cepeda has two home runs in the series. Six runs batted in. One ball, no strike on him. Lodich takes a look at Flood, who does not have too much of a lead. There's a curveball in there for call strike one. They play Cepeda straight away. And deep. Cepeda hits a lot of balls hard in the right center field. One ball, one strike on Cepeda. On at first base, Kurt Flood. There goes Flood, and he picked him off at first. Don Cash running down to Dick McAuliffe. Now that McAuliffe is running him back to Mickey Lowe. Mickey Lowe has the ball. He's running him back to Stanley. Stanley is now running Flood down and takes him. He's out of play, went one to three to four to one to six, and they finally trapped him down there. And that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. So the score after six full innings, the Tigers still nothing and the Cardinals nothing. The Tigers no runs on one hit, the Cardinals no runs on four hits. And to tell you all about it, the side kick, Ernie Harbaugh. Come on in, Ernie. Thank you, Pee Wee. Stanley takes the curve from Gibson for strike as the seventh inning gets underway. The score is tied. Stanley has the only Tiger hit off Bob Gibson at a single in the fourth inning. He takes the ball wide. One and one, the count on Mickey. Uh, Brock has tied a series record by hitting safely in every game of a seven-game series. And done uh, many times uh, previous to this series. The wind-up and the pitch swung on and popped foul back of the plate. It'll be out of play. The Tigers have had only one runner on the bases against the great Bob Gibson this afternoon. That was Stanley, who had a single, an infield hit to the shortstop in the fourth with one man out. But the Cardinals have four hits off Lodich, and they've all been singles. A brilliant duel between two great pitchers. Scoreless tie, seventh inning, the pitch. Curveball, hit on the line drive, foul over the head of Cepeda. He almost had a shot at that ball, but it was over his head, and he leaped and couldn't reach it. It went into foul territory. A check swing by Stanley. This is the closest uh, game the two teams have played so far. In all the other games, one of the teams got out in front rather early. In the first game of the series, the Cardinals got three in the fourth. That was the latest that went scoring. Here's a strike called. A big fastball flips the outside corner. And Gibson uh, gets another strikeout. That's number seven. He had not had one since Kaline struck out in the fourth inning. And here is K-Line up again. The Tigers hitting hero in this series, but he's 0 for 2 against Gibson today, both on strikeout. Bounding ball to third. Draft by Shannon. They throw the first, a rather easy out. Shannon to Cepeda. K-Line retired, two down, nobody on. Game scoreless in the Tigers' seventh inning, and here is Norman Cash. Cash has fly to right and bounced to third. Tigers have hit only three ground balls. Two to Shannon, one to Javier. Norman Cash, the Texan, facing Bob Gibson. Two out, nobody on. He takes a ball high, ball one. Now the windup by the Cardinal right-handed. The pitch is cut on and missed. There's a fastball that he blew right through there. One and one, the count on Cash. Two out. 
Nobody on. This is the type of game that can explode on any pitch. Gibson is set down 10 in a row. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Cash takes the ball. Checks his swing on an outside fastball. 2-1 and one, the count on Norman. Outfield deep to right. The infield back with two out. The base is empty. Gibson checking his time with Ketchum McCarver. Scoreless tie. It's the seventh inning. The wind up. The pitch to Cash. He takes the curve across. 2-2. Two, two. Changed up and got his curve over. Not only did he get it over, he got it in a good spot, Ernie, just on that outside corner. Cash thought it missed. I don't believe Gibson's thrown his curve as much as he did in the uh, first game. Here's a pitch. Here's a curve. It's low. Full count on Norman Cash. Two out, nobody on, no score, seventh inning, Tigers at bat. Game of the World Series. Now the windup and the pitch. Swing, there's a looping drive to right. It'll drop in for a single by Cash. Fielded by Roger Maris, the Cardinal right fielder, and Cash has hit number two off Bob Gibson. Each of the hits has been a single. Here's Willie Horton, who has struck out and popped the second base. Cash is only the second man to reach base against the fine pitching of Bob Gibson. And the tension mounts here as the game moves into the late innings in St. Louis. Two out and one on. Ground ball, left side, two, base hit by Horton. Cash checks in and holds it second. And the Tigers, for the first time, have two men on base. For the first time, they've moved the man past first. That is the third hit, a ground ball single between Shannon and Knoxville. And Jim Northrup comes to bat now against Gibson. Now this is the only real scoring threat the Tigers have mounted against Gibson. Previous to this inning, Stanley had a single. He'd been the only runner. Now it's Cash at second. Willie Hawks at first base. Game tied in the seventh. Time call by the Cardinal catcher McCarver. He goes out to talk to Gibson. Ernie Mabers, Jim McCarver, or Bob Gibson may have heard Frank Blair on the Today Show this morning when he said the NBC computer said that Jim Northup would hit a home run with two men on today. <laughs> Maybe they better walk and said, let's uh, strike out that computer. Eh? <laughs> now the set by Gibson, we're ready. There's a swing and a fly ball to center. Here comes Slaw digging hard. He almost fell out. It's over his head for the hit. Cash is rounding third. He scores. Willie Horton rounding third. He scores. Northrop goes into third base. Detroit leads two to nothing. like Kurt Blood. He charged in on that ball, and he saw that the ball was hit harder than he thought it was. He tried to break back. He slipped on it, and then could not catch up to the ball. It's a three-bagger, and the Tigers lead two to nothing in the seventh. Freehand takes the curve from Gibson. Ball one with two out. Singles by Cash and Hort. And then a fly to deep center. Over the head of Platt for three bases. That came off the bat of Northrop. Here's a strike. A breaking ball in the inside corner. One and one. So Detroit broke them the scoreless tie to go ahead. Two nothing in the seventh. Man on third, two out. Freehand takes the fastball. Low of the way. Two balls, one strike. Northrop third base. The infield laying back now. And the outfield straight away on freehand. Gibson winds and pitches. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Two to the count on freehand. Check of the sign by Gibson. It's the 2-2 pitch. 
swing. There's a line drive left to the field coming hard. Is Brock. He can't get it. It bounds away from him. Freehand going for two. Northrop is scored, and Freehand goes in, standing in second. 3-0 Detroit. That is a two-base hit for Freehand. Brock, the left fielder, charged the ball. He managed to almost short hop it, but it bounded away from him. Northrop scored easily, and Freehand takes a double. And the Detroit Tigers lead 3 to nothing in the seventh. The batter will be Wirt, and they'll put him on with first base open. And two out, and the pitcher Moldich due to that next. Wirt is getting an intentional walk here in the seventh inning situation. And he tosses the bat away and shots on down to first base. That is the first walk off Gibson. It's an intentional pass. So Detroit with a 3-0 lead now. As Freehand at second, Wirt at first base from the seventh inning. They're two out of the pitcher Lolich at bat. He swings and fouls in into the Cardinal dugout. Lolich is struck out and bounced to second. The Tigers exploded here in the seventh with two away. Singles by Cash and Horton, a three-bagger by Northrop, and a double by Freehand. Detroit with a 3-0 lead now. As Freehand at second, Wirt at first base from the seventh inning. They're two out of the pitcher Lolich at bat. He swings and fouls in into the Cardinal dugout. Lolich is struck out and bounced to second. The Tigers exploded here in the seventh with two away. Singles by Cash and Horton, a three-bagger by Northrop, and a double by Freehand. There's a cut and a miss on a breaking ball. Strike two on Lolich. Gibson trying to hold him off now. The Tigers have scored three times. He sets and pitches. Here's a strike call. Struck him out. It's the East strikeout for Gibson. At the end of six and one half innings, Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. Well, Bob Gibson was just sailing right along, Ernie. But he ran in a little trouble after the two outs and top half the seventh inning. He gets struck out, Mickey Stanley, then Kaline grounded out to third. Looks like an easy inning. Then Cash got a base hit. Martin followed with one in the left. Then on a ball hit out to center field that Kurt Flood came in on just a little bit. Then the saw was hit harder, tried to go back, flipped, could not catch up with it. And North batted in two runs. Then Freehan hit a double. So there's three runs. The Tigers now lead three to nothing. Going in the bottom half of the seventh inning, and Orlando Cepeda, the first hitter, Ernie. Orlando steps in. He walked in the first inning, and then he grounded out to Don Wirt, the Tiger third baseman in the fourth. So officially, he is 0 for 1 in this afternoon's game. Mickey Lodich, the Detroit left-hander, delivers, and Cepeda fouls it off out of play. Strike one on Cepeda. deep, the infield back, the outfield straight away on him. Lovitz checking his sign. The left hander kicks and deals. The Peter swings and misses on a high, hard one. Strike two to count on him. Worked uh, deep at third base. Stanley over into the hole at shortstop now on Cepeda. The windup by Lodic, the strike two pitch, is a ball. He checked his swing on a let-up curve. One ball, two strikes. Cash playing at first base. McCarthy at second. Stanley at short. Word at third. In the outfield, the Tigers have Horton left, north of and center. k the right fielder. The catcher freehand and the pitcher, Mickey Lodic. Now the one-two pitch is due to Cepeda. Watch out, he backed him away, 2-2, two -two, high and in close. After Cepeda, it'll be Shannon and then McCarver. Detroit leads 3-0 in the last half of the seventh here in St. Louis in the seventh game of the World Series. Here's the pitch. Struck him out, swung and miss. It's the third strikeout by Lovitz. The next Cardinal batter will be Mike Shannon. He has fly to right and fanned. One 
One out and nobody on. Lolich is taking a little more time than he did earlier. Kicks and kneels and Shannon hits a ground foul past third base. Ball hit sharply but pulled too much. Strike one. Three runs, five hits, no errors for Detroit. St. Louis, no runs, four hits, and no errors. And the Cardinals are batting in the seventh with one out. Here's the ball high. Hands up on the bat as if he might try to buck the ball. Work was laying back. And the batter, Shannon, then did not offer on the pitch from Lovitch. Uh, Stanley moving a little over to the glove side at shortstop. Here's the windup, the pitch. It's a high one, two and one. McCarver waiting at the on-deck circle for St. Louis. Tigers ahead, three to nothing over the Cardinals in the seventh. Now the 2-1 delivery. He takes a curve for a strike. 2-2 two, two, the count on Shannon. Checks his sign, ready to go on the 2-2 delivery. Shannon backs off from a high, tight one, 3-2. Pee-wee is in my imagination, or is he taking more time out there, Lowlitz? I think he is. Of course, uh, Lowlitz pitching with two days rest. He's thrown quite a few balls. He could be a little bit tired. Maybe he's just uh, resting a little bit between pitches. Shannon waits now on the 3-2 delivery. Swung on, there's a fly ball to left center, not very deep. Horton and North are coming after it. Both are there, and... second base. Northrop and Horton converged on the fly ball into short left center. Neither one uh, waved the other one off. They had a very near collision. Northrop managed to get his glove on the ball and then it squirted away. Shannon able to take second base on the error and here is McCarver batting. He's had a walk and a single. He's been on base each of his two trips. The first error of this game. Here's the pitch. Swing, there's a fly ball in the right. Not very deep. K line has the range of it. Makes the catch in right field. The throw comes into Stanley, and Shannon gets back to second. That was pretty close. Stanley grabbed the ball and almost uh, ran him back. Ernie, we've heard about K line. Fire with the bat, his face running. He can do it all. You just saw his arm right there. Shannon made a bluff like he was going to third. He didn't have any idea of going, but that ball was fired to Stanley, and Stanley almost picked him off a second. Caitlin has one of the great arms in baseball. Here's Roger Maris. Man on second. Two out. Cardinals batting. The Tigers lead 3 nothing in the last half of the seventh inning. Maris has hit into a double play and struck out swinging against the Tiger pitcher Lobos. And a miss on a curve. Strike one on Roger Maris. Schofield running uh, down toward the Cardinal bullpen. Goes through the door and disappears behind the fence. We don't have the vision on the bullpen here in this park. Strike one count on Maris. Man on second. Two out. There's a pop-up. Into the middle of the diamond. Stanley, the shortstop, calling for it. He makes the catch, and that's all for the Cardinal. And at the end of seven, it is Detroit. Three and St. Louis nothing. 
Dick McCullough to lead off for Detroit. Detroit ahead, 3-0 in the eighth. Gibson delivers, and it's a ball outside on McCullough, a fast ball. The Tigers, with two out in the seventh, scored three times. Singles by Cash and Horton, a triple by Northrop, and a double by Freehand. Is a bombing ball on the right side of the infield. Javier makes a good stop, throws over to Cepeda, and McCullough is out. One up and one away for the Detroiters in their eighth inning. The batter will be Mickey Stanley, who has lined to the pitcher Gibson, single to the shortstop deep, and taken a call third strike. Detroit three, St. Louis nothing in the eighth. Gibson ready to go to work. Swing, a bounding ball to short. Maxwell charges, grabs it, throws to Peta. He got him by three steps. Two up and two away in the Detroit eighth inning. And the batter will be Al Kaline, who has failed to hit in this game. He struck out twice, bounced to third. Swing, there's a line shot grabbed by the second baseman, Javier, to end the inning. And at the end of seven and one half innings in St. Louis, Detroit three, the Cardinals nothing. with Jim Simpson since Ernie Harwell has gone downstairs in case the Tigers win this game. We'll have a little post-game ceremony. So it's a pleasure having Mr. Simpson to come in here and work with me in these last few innings. So in about a half the eighth inning, the first hitter, the pinch hitter, Phil Gagliano. Come on in, Jim. Thank you, Pee Wee, very much. Here's Gagliano, 0 for 2 in the series. As Red Shandings goes to the bench in an effort to get some runs. He trails 3 nothing. Gagliano takes the first pitch from Lolich in an attempt to win his third game of this series. It is low ball one. The Cardinals had a great opportunity to score in the sixth inning when they got two hits, but two men were thrown out stealing. The third out was a line drive to the shortstop. Ground ball, chance for Ward, backs on the ball, has it at third base, throws high, but Cash has it for the first out of the Cardinals' eight. Bob Gibson will bat for himself, and listen to this ovation. who has struck out eight, but as of this moment is failing in his attempt to win his eighth consecutive World Series complete game, stands in to bat for himself. He's ground about and popped up. Lawlich's first pitch, swung on and fouled of the screen, strike one. Lawlich, of course, is working with two days rest, a 17-game winner during the regular season, and now in an effort to win his third World Series game and the series for the Tigers. Three to nothing in the last of the eighth with one out and none on. Lolich again ready. Three quarters delivery, punted foul down toward the third base coach's box where Joe Schultz picks it up. It's strike two to Gibson. Temperature today about 60 degrees, a perfect day after the rain of yesterday and the rain of Sunday in Detroit for the seventh and conclusive game of the 1968 World Series. Gibson back in the box with a count of two strikes Lolich ready now, looking into Bill Freehand for the side. Two strike pitch, fouled off and back over the screen below. Still two strikes. Tigers got their runs with two out on the seventh. Cash singled, Horton singled him down to second. North will get a ball to straightaway center field. Flood broke in, then went back, slipped it, went over his head for a triple, and Freehand doubled him in. And it's 3 nothing. Lolich ready again. Low pitch. Gibson went part the way around, but plate umpire Tom Gorman says not all the way. It's ball one. One and two. In that seventh inning, the Tigers sent to bat against Bob Gibson eight men. Lolich ready again. From over the top, it is fouled off the end of the bat of Gibson, and the count remains at one and two. Pee-wee, we had some high-scoring games throughout this series, but when they talk about the series, I'm sure they're going to talk about this seventh game. You've seen some kind of pitching in this game. Lowley's got off to a little bad start. Looked like he may have a little trouble, but he has settled down and pitched great ball. And, of course, Gibson had no trouble at all until the seventh inning. Bottom to the count. Gibson, of course, admitted he was tired, as is Lowley. 
The Tigers, to me, look like they're swinging the bat a little bit better against Gibson today. Swing and a miss by Gibson. And there is the fourth strikeout for Lonitz in the second out of the eighth inning. And that'll bring up Lou Brock. Brock has more hits than anybody else in the series, 13, and of course he has stolen seven bases. But you'll recall the last time that he tried this field in series play since reaching the mark of seven, he has been thrown out. Today has ground up to second twice. With word drawn in on a 2-0 pitch in the 60s, single passed him, but then was thrown out in an attempt to steal. Lulich throwing to cash to Stanley, who put it on him. Two out on the eighth, three to nothing to score. Lulich ready to work to Brock. Breaking pitch off the corner, ball one. Danny Harwell, who has been working the games with Pee Wee, now in the Detroit dressing room in case the Tigers win. And Jack Buck, who worked the games in Detroit, is in the St. Louis dressing room in case the Cardinals come back. A low pitch, 2 0 now to Brock. Lou backs out, looks down to Schultz at third base. Out here, 54,692. That's been the mark in every game. The Cardinals have won eight World Series and lost three. 2-0, and, oh, and Brock stands there and watches it sail low, and it's 3-0. Oh. Two out, Brock the batter, and Lolich, who now stands with his hands on his hips and looks out towards center field. As a count of 3-0 oh on Lou Brock. Mickey now ready, staring in at Brock, who has that closed stance. That boy steps across the plate. He was taking all the way, and it's outside and high. Ball four, and the dangerous Lou Brock is at first base with two out. That's the third walk given up by Lolich, and the first since the second inning, and here comes Mayo Smith. It could be, Pee Wee, that Lolich is tired and has said something between innings, or it could be that... Mayo is simply coming out to calm him down and remind him that he has two out with Brock at first. Three runs on five hits, one error for Detroit. No runs, four hits, no errors for the Cardinals. But Jim, I was just wondering. I uh, heard Denny McLean ask the question yesterday that if Mayo Smith needs you tomorrow, of course, we know we're not going to take out Lowlich right now, but he wanted to talk to him. Kind of slowing down, as you said, but I was wondering if Denny McLean will be used in this ball game if Lola's is taken out. I wouldn't be uh, too much surprised to see Denny McLean coming to this ball game. McLean, the winner yesterday, of course, see, we did not have to throw that hard as a result of the two runs in the second and the ten in the third. And therefore was not worked too hard, although he went to full nine. Now we have two out. We'll keep an eye on Brock at first base. Three to nothing to score Detroit. We're in the last of the eighth inning. And Julio Javier is the batter. 0 for 3 on the day. Bunts the ball. Boyd picks it up on one hop, fires on the first base and has it for the third out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and at the end of eight, Detroit three, St. Louis nothing. Right going to the top half of the ninth inning, you know these Tigers are happy. Even Norm Cash listens to the music and he comes up to home plate, kind of doing a little jig. They're leading this ball game by a score of three to nothing. Norm Cash, Willie Harton, and Jim Nossett. Here in the top of the ninth inning, the face gets in to tell you all about it, Jim Simpson. All right, Pee Wee, Ducky Schofield has gone in at shortstop. Remember, Maxville was batted for. Cash cuts on the first ball, hits it very high. Maris is waiting in right field, now drops in a few steps and has it for the first out of the Tigers' ninth. That will bring up Willie Horton. I didn't even get a chance to tell you. In the seventh, with two out, it was Cash who singled to right, and Horton, whose two out single, kept the drive alive and set up the triple over the head of Flood by Jim Northrup. One out in the ninth. And the Tigers right now have a 3-0 lead. Gibson working, breaking ball, late down the line in left field. Over quickly is Brock. Horton goes around first base and will stay right there. And that is the sixth hit of Bob Gibson. Jim looks to me like they're going to put a runner in for Willie Harton. I see Mayo Smith at the top of the dugout there. Signaling down to the bullpen. He wants a runner. And it could be for Willie Hart. And if that happens, apparently Northrop, as has happened in other series games, Pee Wee will move from center to left. Stanley will go from short to center, and they'll bring in Ray Euler for defensive purposes. It looks like Dick Trzuski coming in. There's Willie Hart and leaving first base. And I believe it is. Here comes Dick Trzuski going over to talk to his manager. 
Mayo Smith, he's getting himself a helmet. So it'll be Dick Trzuski running for Willie Hart. And as Jim told you, Nossip will probably move over to left. Mickey Stanley, the shortstop, will move out in the center field. And maybe Trzuski will just stay in at the game and play shortstop. Especially since he is battle-tested in series play, Pee Wee. If you would like to look ahead to the last of the night and the last chance for the St. Louis Cardinals, Flood, Cepeda, and Shannon, the listed batters. Here is Northrop, whose triple drove in the first two runs. He later scored himself. And this 3-0 ball game takes the breaking pitch from Bob Gibson. It's low, ball one. Brzezewski running for Horton, who got his second hit of the day, is at first base, one out in the ninth. Gibson ready again. Half check swing by Northrop. It's fouled off to the left. It is one and one. The crowd here of nearly 55,000 just bursting to cut loose if the Tigers can come back. But right now, Bob Gibson trailing three to nothing is trying to set down the Tigers in the ninth. One one pitch from Gibson. Fastball low. It is two and one. Northrop with the grand slam yesterday has also hit another home run and it was off Bob Gibson back in Detroit. Ground ball up the middle. Gets under Schofield and digging around first and going a rather second and going for third is Suzuki. They're then on first and third and with one out the Tigers again come alive. And that's the second hit of this game for Northrop. And that will bring up Bill Freehand who went 0 for 16 before getting a single yesterday. Today, he has a double to drive in the third run of this game. And with one out, men at first and third, Freehand is up. And let me tell you that Bill has hit the ball very well today. He has lined out to flood in center and sent Brock deep in left and then double to left. He's been swinging the bat very well. Gibson ready and throws fastball. Cut on. Off first base in foul territory. A high pop. Cepeda there and now has it for the second out of the ninth. <laughs> And that will bring up third baseman John Work. Work today struck out on three pitches in the third, fly to center in the sixth, and was put on intentionally in the seventh before Lodic struck out to end that big uprising in which the Tigers had four runs and, or rather, four hits and scored all three runs. Ball hit up the center. This will drive another run in around second but will stop there and work drives in a run with a sharp single to center on the first pitch from Bob Gibson it is four to nothing Detroit in the ninth and that will give Mickey Lolich a chance for an ovation from this crowd here at Bush Stadium Lolich has shut off the Cardinals thus far given up only four hits it's the first pitch high in the air. Drifting back is Javier from second base and should have it for the third out. But the Tigers score a run. And in the middle of the ninth, the score now is Detroit four and St. Louis nothing. Well, here are the changes. Nossip has moved over left, taking Willie Harden's place. Stanley from shortstop out to center. And Ray Aller is now playing shortstop for the Tigers. And it's the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Cardinals trail by a score of four to nothing. It's the last chance for the Cardinals. Kurt Flood is the first hitter. And now Jim steps in. Thank you, Pee Wee, as Flood steps in. He has two hits today, has stolen a base, and has been picked off in an attempt to steal a base. Well, it's ready. He's got all the way, and there's strike one. Blood, Cepeda, and Shannon. Bob Gibson, apparently, having failed in his attempt to win eight consecutive and complete games, but this game is not over yet, and like the Tigers, the Cardinals are explosive. Off-speed pitch, strike two to Flood. Third was taking all away. Four runs, eight hits, one error for Detroit, no runs, four hits, no errors for the Cardinals. Defensively, trying to stop the Cardinals, Word at third, Euler at short, McAuliffe at second, Cash at first, Northrop at left, Stanley in center, Kalon and right free on the catcher. Lodich delivering. Foul tipped on the swing. And it's still two strikes. Ernie Harwell has been with you along with Pee Wee all through this ball game and all games from here in St. Louis at the moment is in the Detroit dressing room in the event. And right now it seems a likely one that the Tigers win the series. 
but the Cardinals still have their say. Well, it's ready for the two-strike pitch. Off-speed pitch, but it's low, and it's one and two. The day has been perfect for this seventh consecutive, or rather seventh game of the World Series. And the game has been perfect, unless you're a Cardinal fan. Tight pitching, nobody scored until the seventh inning. Gibson and Lolich in a duel all the way. Neither has been replaced. One-two pitch, line drive, gloved by Oiler at shortstop. One out. Oiler raced to his right. The drive seemed to sink, and he stuck up his glove and had it. And here is Orlando Cepeda. Cepeda has walked. Wirt made a fine play in his ground ball in the fourth, and he struck out swinging on a 2-2 pitch in the seventh. And while it back, back in the fourth, Cepeda pulled one deep and foul to the left and then pushed one deep and foul to the right. He had good wood on the ball. The Tigers right now two outs away from this World Series victory. High in the air on the first pitch, perhaps playable. Freehand comes off the bag. Word is in. Freehand says he's got it. Two out on the ninth. And with two outs, some of the fans here in Bush Stadium in St. Louis feel that the Tigers have it wrapped up. They're beginning to leave, Pee Wee. But here comes Mike Shannon. And in the excitement of this ballgame, if Shannon does not get on, let us pay tribute to one man, whom we have seen apparently bat for the last time in baseball, Roger Maris, who's listed a couple of batters away from Shannon. Roger is retiring after today's game. He may yet get to bat. Here is Shannon, fly to right, struck out swinging, and reached on an arrow when Northrop and Horton nearly collided in the seventh inning in left center field. Lolich ready, fires low, ball one. Four runs on eight hits, one error for Detroit, the big blow. Northrop triple over the head of Flood in center field in the seventh. No runs, four hits, no errors for the Cardinals. Bob Gibson, who had given up one run in the prior two games to this, has given up four. Up high with the pitch, it is 2-0. Many of the Tigers are along the front step of their dugout. Staring out at Lovitch, who is working with two days rest. Two and pitch from Mickey. Catches the corner. Strike one. Two and one. Mickey has slowed down Pee Wee in his delivery. But nevertheless, as he has slowed down, he continues to throw hard. I was thinking the same thing in the ninth inning. He came right out and took charge. He is throwing as hard right now as he has all day. Run one pitch, long drive left field. Back toward the wall goes Northrop looking up at the base. It is over the wall, home run. Four to one, Detroit. and Mike Shannon on a 2-1 pitch drilled it over the wall in left field and it is 4-1, to one, two out in the ninth and the Cardinals still alive with catcher Jim McCarver, the batter. He is one for two on the day. He is also one. Maris is on deck. Lolich is a left-handed pitcher and McCarver and Maris are both left-handed batters. However, the word is that McCarver can hit the left-handed pitching. Cardinal catcher waits. Lolich fires, ball is hit high in the air. This should be the series. Freehand waving everybody away in foul territory. Detroit wins. Lolich is being mobbed at home plate. The Detroit Tigers, down three games to one, came back and have won it, something only two other teams have ever done. Pittsburgh over Washington in 1925, and the Yankees over the Braves in 1958. And now the Tigers have done it over the defending world champion St. Louis Cardinals. Down three games to one. They have taken three in a row with Lowlitz today winning his third. Denny McLean won the fourth game yesterday. The final score, Detroit 4, St. Louis 1. Well, Pee Wee Reese. This is the third time in history it's been done. A lot of folks thought the Detroit Tigers were through, but they really have come back and have taken this 1968 World Series. Well, I would think so. After seeing Rollage last game over in Detroit, after the Cardinals 
We're leading the series by three games to one. They, the Cardinals got three runs in that first inning. It looks like it was just a matter of time and just how much the Cardinals would beat him by, but he settled down and came back and pitched a great ball game and won it five to three. And the Detroit Ball Club and so did the Cardinals. They both deserve a lot of credit. Bob Gibson pitched great ball all day, but he looks like he may have gotten a little tired in the seventh inning, and the Tigers finally got to him, scoring three runs there after two men were out, and they scored one run in the ninth inning. Mickey Lowell pitching with two days rest. Didn't look to me like he was too tired, Jim. <laughs> he sure did, and we might also point out to you that in the sixth inning, the Cardinals had a great chance to score, had two base hits. But now in the dressing room, Bernie Howell with Mickey Lowell. His third victory, Mickey Lowell, and Mickey, it has been fantastic what you have done. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you very much. I really don't have too much to say right now. I really don't. Did you feel very tired? Did you feel like that you might be uh, losing your stuff toward the late inning? I never got tired in the game. I, I was weak almost from about the third inning on. I didn't have the real good hard fastball that I do know how to throw. As you notice, most of the balls today were hit on the ground. I was throwing a sinking fastball all day. I didn't have a good hard fastball. I had a fairly good control, not as good as I usually like, but uh, I kept making the ball sink, and I got him out. The fact that you were tired helped that ball sink a little more, you think? Right, it helped a lot. By being tired, it causes the ball to sink more. Now, what about, uh, you had a little conference on the mound right at the end. Did Mayo come out and ask if you had enough gas left to go, or what? No, he says he just wanted to slow me down. He says he thought maybe I was getting too excited out there about, you know, mm -hmm. having us so close to coming to the end. He says, I want you to take it easy, relax, and throw like you've been throwing all day. All right. Well, thank you, Mickey. It was a great performance, and have a very nice, quiet winter. The final score, Detroit 4, St. Louis 1.